Hey folks, uh, welcome to a Cloud Austin video for Google Workspace highlights for the late spring 2023, so the May-June timeframe. Um, there are lots of Google Workspace updates that come out all the time. Um, there's more or less one every single day. So I just took out a couple that I'm really jazzed about and wanted to share them with you here today. So we're gonna do a little bit of sharing, a little bit of demoing, uh, and if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out. Uh, and keep in mind, there are lots of others out there. These are just some of the ones that I'm really excited about. Okay, so here's our agenda today. Um, you can see we have a lot of things focused on docs, got a couple of things on chat and sheets and Gmail, and then wrap up with Drive. So here's our agenda. Uh, we're gonna dive right in um, with our doc stuff. So docs is really super um, because everything that I'm excited about today, I can demo with you. So I'm going to open up a new uh, tab and just do a new doc. Okay, so let's go back. So um, one of the first things I'm really excited about is building out custom building blocks. Um, I think that's so exciting. As soon as I saw those building blocks um, roll out when it came to uh, meeting notes and things like that, I knew that these were going to be uh, a highly um, uh, flexible feature that they built out. So I'm glad they made them so we can just customize them. So let's build something here that we're interested in. So maybe we have a, a checklist um, for uh, getting, getting started using Gmail, right? And we'll make a little checklist here. So I'm gonna add some checkboxes, right? Uh, go to gmail.com, um, create, uh, set up your signature, uh, set up an out of office, and create your first email and send it. Great, so I got this uh, little checklist here. Um, I can now, let's say I wanna take this and I wanna use it in future documents all the time. Um, instead of, but I don't wanna come back here and copy and paste it and all that jazz. I wanna just put it into a custom building block. So I could just simply highlight all of this, right click, and then I've got this new save as custom building block here. And I can give it a name. So getting started with Gmail. Uh, for beginners, okay, hit create. Okay, I'm gonna hit, got it. All right, so now if I am in a new doc or I'm just down here, I just hit the at. Um, I got it, I could do a couple of different things. I can go into building blocks here and I can see getting started for Gmail. I could just click that and it will automatically populate that. Okay, so the next thing um, that I'm excited about is the ability to have collapsible sections in Docs. Um, I can't tell you how long I've been waiting for this one. Um, one thing I'm a little bummed about is right now it's only available in pageless uh, Doc format. Um, I don't know if that's gonna change in the future. I hope it does, um, but let me show you what that looks like. So let's pretend that we have this and we set it up where we give this a header. So I'm gonna give it header one. All right, so right now, let's pretend this is a super duper long list, right? So I'm gonna make it a super duper long list, okay? Um, and this is really clogging on my document. What I can do is if I have this in a page list format, so if I go to File, Page Setup, and I have this on page list format, if you don't know about page list format, there's a lot of documentation about that. Um, now, I've got this Collapse Heading button that shows up here and you can easily collapse that. Um, so that way it's easier to see all of the things within your document. I think this is really powerful and really cool. I think there's gonna be some more things that roll out with it, but check out the collapsible headers. Um, so if you've got a couple of these, right? Now I, all of a sudden I've got this really long document. I can go ahead and collapse these out and just expand them kind of like a website whenever you want to. Just really helpful and really cool. Um, okay, so other things within Docs that I wanted to highlight were some of the new um, timer smart chips. So if I collapse this, collapse this, if I go down here, um, and let me get rid of you. Okay, great. Um, I can put go back to my at symbol and I can put in stopwatch. Um, and it creates this little stopwatch here. 
and you can just click it and it will start counting. And if you hover over it, you can see a smaller, more accurate number. Um, the cool thing is like you could also just like make this larger and move it around and do lots of fun things with it. Okay, so just keep that in mind that you can go ahead and tweak it and move it where you want it to go. Um, I'll go back to my at symbol here. There's other smart chips and the other one I want to talk about is timer. So timer gives you the ability to have a timer in here that's counting down like a timer. Um, you could also, if you start typing timer, instead of just having timer, there are these pre-built ones, one minute, two minute, five minute, 10 minute. So you can just click that and you're there ready to go. You don't have to adjust the time, which is really helpful. So now I got all these timers going on, which is really cool. Um, maybe for uh, timing a meeting or um, anything like that. Um, okay, great. And the last thing is collaborating with others when creating calendar events. So if you remember uh, a while ago, one of the building blocks that came out was um, setting up a, a email draft, right? So we have this email draft here, which made it so that you could start drafting an email in here and then hit this little button and it would automatically put it in a Gmail message for you. Um, I want to go back down with my add symbol to those building blocks. There's a couple of other ones in here as well, but now this calendar email draft is the one I want to highlight. Um, so that way it dumps this in here and you can put in a title, guests, start time, end time, location, description, and you hit that little preview and calendar button and it will automatically make the event for you. And all you got to do is hit save. Very cool, especially if you're collaborating. Um, and don't sleep on the meeting notes building block if that's not one that you've explored before. Um, just pull in a, an event to attach it to. It's super duper helpful. Uh, okay, so moving on from our docs, um, two things in chat I wanted to uh, share. So let's jump over to chat. So one of them is the ability to have these quicker reactions. So we had that little uh, face there for a long time where you can click at the emoji face wheel and select different emojis. But um, now rolling out is the ability to have some quicker reactions right there. Um, this is a really cool thing to be able to uh, respond uh, more instinctively and quicker um, in the moment to those chat messages that are coming in. I'm gonna hop over to chat and show you this other feature that I'm really interested in, which is, um, for quoting. So um, I've got this message here um, and just like in many other messaging platforms, the ability to quote back to a message is really helpful in keeping track of what you're talking about, right? So let's say um, I wanna quote my first message here, this test message. Um, I'm gonna hit this little arrow here. I'm gonna say, did you ever receive this? So now I've got this message that I sent that's quoting this original message, which is great. If I click it, it'll highlight it for me, especially if it's higher in a longer thread, um, which is really super helpful. I've used that, that quoting a lot already. Um, I think you will too. Okay, uh, two things in chat, um, sheets. So two things in sheets. So the first thing here is about extracting data um, in sheets. So if you have smart chips in there from different documents, whether it's a um, slideshow, another sheet, or a doc. Um, if, you if you highlight those, right click and hit uh, data extraction, which you could see here. Um, what you can do is you can say, what do you want to extract from that? So this example, we have creation time, modified who the owner is, where you want to extract it to, and it will automatically populate it into that space, which is really cool if you're trying to get a handle on large pieces of data um, and all of the information about them. Um, especially like who owns things and where does it live and that kind of thing. So check that out. Very cool and helpful. The other thing is um, having Gmail and Sheets combined to create the power of mail merge. So if I hop over to Gmail, um, now let me get rid of my tasks here. Uh, if I compose a new message, um, we have our normal CC and BCC, but now there's this nice little plus uh, person here, use mail merge. So what I could do is I could set up a mail merge um, similar to that multi-send, and then I can add from a, a spreadsheet. So if I have a spreadsheet with lots of different uh, email addresses in here, I can go ahead and select one, this isn't that one, um, and select those users. Um, make sure you have an email column at the top, so that way it could pull in those email addresses and do a mail merge for you, which is very cool. Okay. Um, and last but not least is a drive update as a way to kind of give uh, access to uh, people a little bit easier, especially when they have requests. 
So you might be used to getting the email saying this person has requested this document, but if you're in there already, um, you don't necessarily see those, um, but now you should, or at least soon you should. So that way, if somebody requests in that share button, you'll see uh, somebody has added a comment or asked, asked to comment um, or asked to be an editor or a viewer, and you can go ahead and just grant that access right there. All right, so these are just a couple of the highlights that I wanted to highlight uh, for this late spring. Um, I think they're really cool and exciting. Uh, if you have any questions about them, let us know, but I hope you get to go ahead and play and enjoy. Thanks for watching.